Hi everyone, it's Alex here from Workshop 12. And today we have some really exciting news. Allow me to introduce the all-in-one 14.4 QHD display for your Jeep Grand Cherokee. These, uh, this unit fits uh, 2014 to 2020 models and some 2021 models that have the 2020 interior. This beautiful Workshop 12 unit will be installed in a 2019 uh, Grand Cherokee and we will be running through the whole entire um, installation process with you guys. Keep in mind that all of our units come with some hefty specs. 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, as well as an extra USB port for external storage for being able to stream any movies or transfer anything over from the unit or from the USB to the unit, vice versa. This is a 14.4 inch corner to corner QHD display. So it's beautiful, very bright and very vivid. Let's not waste any time. Let's check what's in the box and then we'll follow through with an installation. All right, guys, as you can see, we have a bunch of wires, but please, I don't need you to worry as you guys have this trusty fog guide to help you guys out. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is the stereo harness. Depending on the variant of your Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, you might need to connect uh, the red and white RCAs to the Aux R and Aux L of the female RCAs that you received. In addition to that, you're going to be installing the yellow one, which is for your reverse camera, to the brown one that's labeled as CCDV, and you're just going to simply plug it in. In addition to that, you have your main power wire, which is the, the main power one to the unit. And then you have this little tiny white one here that's also going to be connected at the back of the unit. We'll get into the whole installation process once we go in, in, in the vehicle. Then you have here for any um, additional aftermarket speakers or anything like that uh, for any uh, subwoofers that you wish to install. You just would need to get a RCA Y splitter, a male to two females. So you'll be able to connect any additional subwoofers. And then you have additional speaker outputs as well. And then the best part is you also have your two LTE antennas. So if you wish to have onboard internet at all times, you'll be able to go to T-Mobile, get yourself a prepaid data plan, and you'll be able to connect that. Speaking of the LTE antennas, I know a lot of you guys are saying, Alex, I don't wanna get a SIM card. I don't wanna get another subscription. Do I really need data? Well, you see guys, when you connect to a wireless CarPlay or a wireless Android uh, system, your phone connects to the unit's Wi-Fi, occupying your Wi-Fi antenna of the unit. So if you wish to hotspot your phone for internet and at the same time have the ability of having wireless CarPlay, well, that's not going to work. Um, that is why you have a dedicated SIM card tray. I recommend you guys to go to T-Mobile, get yourself a simple uh, prepaid data plan that gives you ability to have best of both worlds. The next thing you guys will notice is you have your SIM card tray here, which of course tags along with your uh, LTE antennas. Then you have your GPS antenna. You guys can stick this GPS antenna anywhere. Really, there's not a particular place to install the GPS antenna. However, we do recommend not to install it anywhere where there is a metal service, uh, surface as it can sometimes interfere with the signal. The beautiful part about all of our Tesla screens is that you don't need to actually use our GPS antenna. They sell on Amazon uh, for like $6 US, I think it's like $10 Canadian, an extension cord. You can just search up um, your vehicle and just type in GPS extension cord, and it's gonna be a male to female, giving you the ability of retaining your original GPS antenna that's mounted on your roof. So if you don't wanna use ours, or you find that for some people that live in a rural area and you guys are um, not getting very good signal having our GPS stuck, uh, tucked inside the dash, get, the, get yourself that extension cord. I can put the link in the bio here uh, so you guys can, can take a look at that. The next thing we have is your FM antenna, FM AM antenna. And then you have this uh, little USB extension cable. This extension cable is to retain your factory USB ports of your unit, of your vehicle. Then you have your uh, external microphone here. We'll talk about this in a quick second, guys. You guys have two USB ports. One of these USB ports will be occupied by the extension here, which you'll simply just connect to. And then the other one you guys can run to the glove box 
to give you accessibility of connecting any USB storage or if you want to stream any movies or just have a hard drive for additional storage. Then you have your external mic. Your external mic will actually simply connect into one of the USB ports, the one here where is the black one here, and you just simply connect that right there. And then you can mount this mic right on your steering column to give you nice easy access to it and a nice clear voice. Okay guys, so I do wanna do a little disclaimer here. The top piece here of this um, trim is a total beep because it is uh, all clips. There are no bolts or screws. There are four bolts once we remove this trim that you'll have to remove. Uh, however, to remove this trim here at, for the first time, all you're gonna need to do is grab our handy dandy packing tools that come included in the box. And you're gonna wanna open the bottom drawer here. Halfway, stick your hand in here and just simply pull. Okay. Once you get a little bit of room here, you can grab our tools and just stick it in here and, and then turn, turn, and turn. Okay. Mopale. Once you have the unit popped out, you're just gonna need to simply remove three connections here. And then you can set the unit to the side. After that, you're gonna grab yourself a nine by 32 socket, and you're gonna remove one, two, three, and four. We'll go, we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, once, once you guys remove the four screws, one, two, three, four, you're gonna grab this whole assembly here and you're just gonna bring it out a bit and then down. So pop it out and down. That way you have it like that. And then you're gonna disconnect all of these connections here, which I'll turn to the other camera so you guys can get a better look. Okay guys, so the first one we're gonna remove is this one here. Uh, you, there's no particular order of removing these. Um, I just wanted to remove these uh, to hopefully turn the unit a little bit more so you guys can see here. Then we're gonna remove the main power one here. This main power one has a little clip here on the side here that you just push and then the this little lever will pop right off exposing the whole clip to make it nice and easy to pop off then go ahead and proceed to remove these they're little tiny um tabs that you have to press on to remove that's it now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove all of these clips uh, these little tiny orange clips, move them onto our unit, and then we're gonna move and swap our um, fans to the new unit. Okay guys, so right now we're going to transfer these clips onto the new unit, and we're gonna be removing the fans. As you can tell, I already started without you guys. Sorry, I got a little too exciting, uh, excited, but I will show you guys how to remove the fans. The first thing I do is I would recommend you guys to start with the top here. So you'll notice that you have a little clip here and a little clip here. I would start off by simply pushing on this a little bit and getting this clip removed. You, oh, you wanna make sure that the bottom hasn't came off yet, just cause I find it a lot easier. I find it a lot easier to do when uh, to do the top first. So all you need to do is pop this off, pop that on. Now you'll see how everything just follows. To remove these clips, guys, all you need to do is simply stick it on one side here and just push forward and you'll notice it just come off just like that. And then you guys can go ahead and continue to do that for the rest of them. And just be careful, you don't want to break anything. And just remember, guys, to never force anything 
If it's not meant to be, it is not meant to be. So I will go ahead and time lapse this to make it a little easier for everyone. Okay guys, so we have transferred uh, the clips. There are going to be 12 clips, uh, ironically, workshop 12, 12 clips that you're gonna need to transfer over to the new unit. Now to transfer over your fans, okay, just like uh, you do the opposite. So we first started off by removing from the top and then it just popped off. So now we're gonna go ahead and start placing it from the bottom here. From the bottom, I'm gonna put it in place and then just push. Super easy guys. Same thing with this one. Show you one more time in case you missed it the first time around here. Um, you're gonna go start from the bottom, line it up, and give it a little push. There you have it. Okay guys, so this is the main stereo harness, okay? This white little plug is going to go right in here, and this, sorry, I can't really see. It's gonna go right in here, okay? And then I'll take this off just to make it a little easier for me to see. Then you have your LTE antennas, okay? The LTE antennas are just going to be right here, screwed on to this little gold prongs here. Then you have your GPS antenna, which would go right in here. Then you have your FM AM antenna, which is gonna go right in here. Okay, and now to make the connections here with these little tiny plugs, okay? You will notice that each plug has a small little tiny guideline on here. So you know that you'll be able to follow it through. So we see here that this has one guideline. We're gonna take a look and see which one has only one guideline. And we see, okay, you know what? This one here seems to be the one. So we'll go and connect this one. This one here has a guideline as well, but we can see that this one is going to be right over here. And then the USB ports, two guidelines, and that's gonna go right over here. And then you have your SIM card, which is gonna be right over here. And then the main power wire, power harness here, which is this one here, going to simply connect right and here. The camera plug is labeled as CCDV, the brown one, and that's gonna connect to the yellow female RC, uh, male, female, sorry guys, I'm a little confused here. <laughs> You're gonna connect this one, the male uh, yellow RCA, to the female brown RCA, bam. That's to get your reverse camera working. And then these two are for different type of variants, uh, depending on the variant of Jeep Grand Cherokee you have. You might need to connect this to Aux R and Aux L. So you would just connect it like that and then like this, okay? Okay guys, so the first wire we're gonna connect it's going to be this one here to retain any of the USBs that you have that your vehicle comes with. So we're going to go ahead and connect this one right in here to this gray one. If I can figure this out, there we go. Okay. Then this side connects to one of the USB ports that we connected. Bing, bada, boom. Then this one here, fish it through to the glove box. Believe me guys, fish this cable through, okay? Because if I ever wanna send you guys software updates, this is how you're gonna get it. This cable, fish it through. The next wire is gonna be the FM AM antenna. So you're gonna notice that you have a bunch of them that are not gonna be needed. One of them will be for your OEM GPS. The other one's gonna be for XM, uh, Sirius XM. And yes, you can still retain your Sirius XM with our kit. You'll have wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Simply download the app on your phone. And every time you get in the car, you'll be able to stream it in a better way that you ever have been able to experience it before. This FM AM antenna is going to be the one that is the thicker one, the thicker cable here, and it's the white one. And it has this little uh, violet uh, color here on the side. You're going to just simply connect that. 
and then this connects um, at the back of the radio here where I showed you previously okay so now we're gonna grab our microfiber cloth to protect the interior hey guys I'm sorry for um, the difference between audio and camera right now it started pouring rain so you're gonna see my face a little closer to the camera because uh, we are trapped in in the car right now because it's literally raining really hard um, that being said guys um, I hope that you guys can still see everything um, I will be moving a little bit faster uh, just to kind of be able to turn on the car because it's starting to get really hot in here um, but this is how we're gonna do it so we left off by connecting the FM AM antenna we connected the USB cable. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect. We, we have the RCAs connected, and now the only cable that's left here is going to be this red cable, uh, this black with red cable, which is actually the main power of the unit. Okay, don't confuse it with the gray one. I mean, only one of them can fit, and it will fit right here at the very back, at the bottom here, and Okay. Okay, and then now we're gonna connect the main stereo harness, which is gonna be this one. You're gonna simply connect this. Okay, once you guys push it, you see, I don't know if you guys saw this little move here, like boom. Now you know exactly that it can just fit right in. So you can just clip it by pushing this little lever down. So we have the main connector, we have the FM, we have the USB one, and then we have, we've made all the connections at the back here. And then we have the main power one, which is the one that is over here. And now we're gonna go ahead and just tuck in the wires. Remember guys that your GPS LTE antennas can just be put anywhere in here somewhere. And then all of the, and then the USB, the additional USB can be push to the glove box as well as your SIM card tray um, in the glove box as well. Okay guys, so there you have the beautiful Workshop 12 14.4 inch QHD display for your Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, right now, uh, we just finished off the installation. Give a quick little walkthrough of the software and um, yeah, let's stop talking because um, I have a habit of making these videos longer than I'd like okay okay guys so here you have the beautiful 14.4 inch QHD display as you can see everything is working from uh, steering wheel controls to even the reverse camera and even the original um, dynamic guidelines are working as well and then you can see here, this is the home UI. You have all of the main apps that you use here and you'll be able to also add custom apps as well. And that's pretty much it with this main UI here. Uh, you can switch it to the other classic, uh, sorry, a modern UI, which is more of your typical Android head unit type style where you'll be able to grab your apps that you want. You can drag them anywhere you want. And if you wanna bring more apps from the app drawer and press and hold it, and drag it over you can create folders and all that stuff you can change the background you can add widgets make it yours um, that is the the more modern way that's most of the people how they have it however um, for people that are just not really used to the android operating system and they want something more on the simple side of things this is the beautiful ui that being said to control your climate all you need to do is you're going to be able to open it up um, by pressing either the numbers or anywhere on here and you get your whole um, climate where if you want to press for dual and you want to just adjust the driver or the passenger side you'll be able to do so um, and then you have here all of your factory car settings so for example if i want to put the car in, in sport mode i can just click sport and it will go into sport um, and whatever else you have on here you'll be able to go and use so for example the engine turn off and on you'll be able to turn it on and off in there um, now don't get too excited because if your vehicle don't doesn't have like air ride suspension don't think that the unit's going to magically give you air ride um, and then this is where you'll be able to control all of your factory settings your headlight off delay 
the whole nine yards. And this is the really cool thing about this unit that it really does retain all of your factory settings and features. You have your hazards, you have your parking um, uh, warning, your park sense off or on, where you'll be able to turn it on or off. And then you also have here uh, your Android Auto. So as you can see, it is connected wirelessly to an Android Auto device. And you have all of your apps here where you'll be able to take a look and see. Or you can just ask um, Google whatever you want, such as, what's today's weather? Pretty cool. Um, that being said, guys, um, that is the, the Android Auto, and it also comes with wireless CarPlay as well. And then you have your app drawer here where you'll be able to download whatever app you want from the Google Play Store and the whole nine yards. You have your DSP, which stands for your digital sound processor with a 16 band equalizer. Every single blue line is a band. You also have uh, the low pass, high pass and strong bass so you can control all of the hertz, the fader and balance. And then you can turn off each and individual speaker if you don't want um, someone to hear. Um, whoever's sitting on the passenger or the rear side there and then I want you guys to be paying attention as I'm moving around how smooth the device is how beautiful it is the bright on the display this panel is actually very impressive um, and then also one of the things that I did want to mention is you also have your ambient light set so if your vehicle does come with different lights that you can change your ambient light you'll be able to do that right here and then you'll also be able to go under the car settings here. If you go all the way down here, this is where you'll be able to connect uh, to adjust if you have the premium sound system. So this car doesn't come with the premium sound system, but if you had the premium sound system, you'll be able to adjust the bass um, and the middle, uh, the mids and the, and the treble and the volume of the amplifier of the unit. But because this is the standard um, audio, the way you'll adjust those is through the DSP app. Now guys, this is just a quick software walkthrough. We're not gonna get into too much details as uh, as I don't really wanna make this video extremely long for you guys. You guys get the point, but if you guys need a, a better video and more depth, in-depth video, I'll be able to help you guys or uh, just drop some comments below and we'll do our best to help you guys out. Uh, we appreciate your support. Alex is out, peace.